Good morning guys, the video I want to do today is about payments and payments are absolutely crucial for people in small businesses like myself. You know, my big passion actually is for all software developers out there, you, to have your own business. Um, you know, don't work for Google or some other, uh, you know, an IBM or some other big company. Have a small software business. But in order to do that, you need to take payment. You cannot overlook it. You need to like sort of prioritize. You've got to actually just think how, you know, the, the best experience to for, for customers to pay you. Um, but the big, I wanted to focus on the sort of three main competitors to help you do that. Let's begin with PayPal. PayPal is actually the one I actually started with back in 2007 with my own business of Web Converger. And the brilliant thing about PayPal actually, it's it can't be um, overstated enough, is that you need what, um, this is maybe a slightly complex solution, but you basically just need um, 20 lines of code, um, pretty much in HTML, in order to take payments. It is that simple, really. It's just a form, you drop in there, and you're, you're taking payments. And that's how I got started. It gets a little bit more complicated, um, when you want to uh, sort of like handle webhooks and things like that um, to make things a little bit more automated. But actually, it's a lot less complicated than anything I've seen out there uh, with, the, with, the, with the competitors like Braintree and Stripe. So let's, let's begin um, and just show you a quick little what the customer might see. So the, the way that I do it is, is I give my customers a, an invoice you, you, this is more of a B2B thing and I say, you know, hit the button on the top right. So it's kind of consistent with, with any uh, payment system I give them. And the big, this is the big drawback I wanted to point out to you. When you click that make um, payment button, PayPal sort of, sh sort of, sort of, sort of, um, sort of funnels you into uh, creating a PayPal account. And this, unfortunately, is the big con of PayPal because uh, most customers like, you know, what is PayPal? I have this sort of corporate credit card that I need to pay you by. I, I'm confused about this form. And the, the thing is that I always have to point out to my customers, seriously, this has just happened so many times at Beggar's Belief, is that they have to click this sort of, um, this little thing here, which they never ever see first time. I always have to point it out, pay with a credit card. So yes, Customers can pay without a PayPal account, and this is really, really crucial. And um, and and um, but PayPal obviously makes it kind of difficult to discover, and obviously that sort of harms your sort of credibility. I did mention that PayPal IPN. You might be wondering what the hell it is. You just have to receive a webhook to do some logic in the background. And this is the code for for my business, it, and it comes up to about eighty three lines of code. And this has served me really rock solid for, well, I even still use it now. So maybe se several years. Um, the main thing you do is you get like a post. Um, it's documented somewhere horribly on the PayPal website. And for different sort of categories, like, you know, if someone signs up, um, you, you, you sort of establish a, a configuration for the software. And obviously, if they stop subscribing, um, uh, you sort of zero the config or something like that. That's the way um, my system works. Um, it's worth pointing out here that you only need the IPN really if you're handing subscriptions. And and I also just wanted to qu quickly point out that, is that my business sort of started up with subscriptions and it you know make, it makes logical sense. You know, you want to charge your customers 10 bucks a month and you want to, you know, forecast that I'm going to earn 120 bucks a year and the next year and the next year. That's great. But in practice, I found that one-off payments work a lot better. So don't fall in the trap of, of, of working, uh, you know, like, oh, I need to build this sort of subscription system. I really encourage you just to like, you know, start with invoice, talk to your customers, say, oh, I'm going to send you an invoice. They, they'll, they'll be familiar with the process. <clears throat> Okay, n n now okay, Braintree. So Braintree is um, is 
offers a new sort of experience because now you can, as you can see here, you can type in your the credit card number and the expiry date and you, you click that and the payment goes through. So no going on to a next page um, and uh, you know no, no, no PayPal funneling and um, it took me a long time to actually get um, to get going with the API but actually now that I, now that I look at it um, okay you need some JavaScript you drop it in there and then you have this you, you have this sort of uh, you have like a something that you you post to that sort of um, does the transaction and um, actually compared to Stripe I think it's a little bit better the um, the error handling is a lot easier but the big bad things about Braintree is well I honestly had to wait almost years to get uh, yeah years it was to get it working here in Singapore because that's now where my business is based um, I think Braintree availability has improved a lot because now it's owned by pay PayPal and now the big issue here is that uh, the charges between using the Braintree API and PayPal are the same. So there's almost like little or no benefit to actually switching to Braintree. The, the, I mean, the only benefit being, as, as, as I pointed out, is that you don't have to you avoid that uh, um, PayPal funnel. Um, the other big gotcha that affected me with Braintree is that it took years to set up in Singapore. <clears throat> and once it's set up, Almost only only when I went live, I realized there was this problem. I charge my customers typically in US dollars, and when I took US dollar payments, it was basically erroring, and um, I basically discovered that I couldn't settle in US dollars. And again, I, back and forth with some minion in Braintree about, can I please settle in US dollars? And by the end of it, you know. By the end of all that horrible customer service I received, and you know, um, and heels dragging, I just thought, effort. I'm not using Braintree. It's just I need something else. So um, next, okay, next is the new entrant, Stripe. They just came available in Singapore, and I was using them in the UK, and they were good. And and now. I have it working here and I took you know my first payment actually just yesterday so in Singapore that is so the way the the, the, the experience is pretty much the same as Braintree um, well not really you click a button um, a modal <laughs> it, it actually works at mobile quite well a modal pumps up and you, you type in the credit card number and the expiry date and the CVC and you pay and it, the payment goes through so no PayPal funneling and it's quite neat I think and the implementation mmm and it's actually I think it's it, it's very comparable to Braintree but you you see the nuances a bit later like I thought to myself like straight Stripe and Braintree are so similar um, you know someone must have been copying one another or something like that so typically um, the API I'm using has like a form API like like um, like PayPal, yay, something simple. Um, but yeah, you need to um, have a, like a PHP library and implement some things. Um, the most annoying thing is that they want you to implement um, error handling. But um, it works well. It works well. I recommend Stripe. Um, I think I'm. <laughs> The annoying thing about all these things is that I think it, I think PayPal charges something like 3.9% and Stripe charges 3.5. I probably I look at my description if I got it wrong, uh, I will correct myself. So there's only like a 0.4%. Well, okay, okay, comparatively, it's a bigger percentage, but it's not much in it. There's not a lot in it. Oh, the big thing I really liked about it was that they have a great IRC channel here you go I really like IRC IRC guys this is the future not slack IRC and the developers in there were really helpful to me and I got going quite quickly and I hope you enjoyed the video please give me a big thumbs up any other questions about PayPal I mean this is the way I implemented um, payments obviously 
there's a lot you can do, but um, I just thought I'd give you a tour of uh, how I do it.